Next, we talk about the renominations of the subcontractor due to the determinations of the contractor. This is an extension from the clause related to the determinations of the nominated subcontractor. Now that nominated subcontractor is proven default and the nominated subcontractor shall be terminated from the project. The architect will need to renominate a new nominated subcontractor for the remaining works. The situation now is there are some part of the work has already been done by the nominated subcontractor. However, due to the default of the nominated subcontractor, the nominated subcontractor ceased to service the project. The remaining work will need to be carried out by the new nominated subcontractor. Under these circumstances, in terms of the payment, the contractor is entitled to be paid the differences between the sum payable to the contractors and the new nominated subcontractor and the sum payable to the previous nominated subcontractor. This will be after the considerations of the sum recoverable from the defaulting subcontractor. There is a bracket here if there is any differences. That means if there is no differences, no payment should be entitled to the contractor. To fully understand this statement here, maybe let us look at the diagram here. This represents the normal circumstances. The amount payable by the employer shall be equal to the amount paid to the contractor plus the amount paid to the nominated subcontractor. The contractor is paid for the words under the contract while the nominated subcontractor shall be paid for the subcontracting work done by him. Under the normal circumstances, everything is running smoothly. Everyone gets their parts. Now the situation here is the nominated subcontractor has been terminated. This shall involve a new nominated subcontractor to carry on with the work. Whichever work completed by the original nominated subcontractor shall be paid to the original nominated subcontractor. And then the remaining subcontract work is done by the new nominated subcontractor and therefore relevant payment should be paid to the new nominated subcontractor. Under these circumstances, the amount payable by the employer it will constitute the part from the contractor and also the previous nominated subcontractor as well as the new nominated subcontractor. Theoretically, the total amount payable by the employer should be the same. You know that the quantifications of the amount payable is determined by the task which is the work done by each party. Since now the words is consistent throughout both situations, regardless the numbers of personnel involved, the amount of work to be done will remain the same. Therefore, the total payable now should theoretically be an equal sum. However, the original NSC here is default. This shall lead to the damage, loss or expenses as a result of his default. Whichever damage, loss and expenses incurred, the contractor should be able to claim from the nominated subcontractor who is defaulting. This is because the original nominated subcontractor is liable to the contractor. Now, this statement here is talking about the differences. To better imagine this, you can look at these equations. We are talking about the total sum payable to the contractor and the new nominated subcontractor. 
which is this component against the total sum payable to the previous nominated subcontractor which is this portion and then there will be a sum recoverable from the defaulting subcontractor we will put it here this amount shall be used to do the ratifications in case of any damage and losses incurred due to the defaulting nominated subcontractor now the differences here it will be the differences between this component and this component to make the thing simple now the amount received by the contractor it will be the amount payable by the employer plus the amount recoverable from the defaulting subcontractor the amount payable by the employer shall be used to finance all the works as per required under the contract then the amount recoverable from the subcontractor who is defaulting it will be used to rectify the losses expenses and damages due to the defaulting nominated subcontractor should there is any balance the contractor will take it all this is what it meant by the balance to be entitled to be paid to the contractor if there is any we can even extend these differences into three possible scenarios first if the differences is equals to zero that means the total payable by the employer has been fully utilized to do the relevant work and the total amount recoverable from the nominated subcontractor has been fully used to finance the damage, loss and expenses suffered by the contractor then this one there is no issue the contractor is not getting extra but in the case that the difference is more than zero this means that the total amount payable by the employer has been used up to finance the construction activities by the contractor previous nominated subcontractor as well as the new nominated subcontractor and the sum recoverable from the defaulting subcontractor which has been used to finance the damage, losses and the expenses due to the default there is still some saving that makes the difference to be more than zero then if there is any the contractor is entitled to be paid the differences here in fact if this is the case the previous NSC might claim from the contractor but I believe there is no ground for the previous NSC to claim that probably we can remove this although it is not stated here what if the differences here is less than zero that means the total sum recoverable from the defaulting subcontractor is insufficient to cover the damage loss and expenses due to the defaulting nominated subcontractor theoretically the relevant amount should be able to be recovered from the defaulting nominated subcontractor otherwise the contractor will have to bear the relevant cost now that when the renominations of the subcontractor happens there will be a transition period for the original nominated subcontractor to vacant the site hand over the possessions of the site so that the new nominated subcontractor can join in this might result in the delay of the work as a result the extension of time shall be granted and regarding the monetary losses related to any damage losses and or expenses as a result of the defaulting subcontractor 
this shall be able to be recovered from the original nominated subcontractor by the contractor.